Welcome back, Bridgewater College Day Game in 2019. New to the chair here in his ninth season here at Bridgewater, but his first in the boss's chair. We have Denver Davis, director of Cross Country Track and Field. Denver, thanks for uh, joining us. Just got back from the NCAA Championships in, uh, in Boston. Talk a little bit about that and what it all went down. Yeah, uh, so we had a really good trip. Uh, we had three athletes qualify, two on the women's side, one on the men's side. Devontae Womack represented our men's program in the 60-meter dash. Uh, he qualified for finals at that meet and was All-American, uh, set a new school record in the prelim round, uh, running 681. And he was also named Regional Athlete of the Year for the South Southeast region uh, right ahead of the meet. And then on the women's side, Calista Ariel ran 3K for us. And she ended up running a pretty significant PR, set a new school record, was less than a second away from a new ODAC record in that event while we were there. And then Emily Valley, who's a junior for us, she represented the women's team in the 60 hurdles and also set a program and conference record in that event. She ran 869, made the finals, earned All-American status. So uh, pretty successful, very fun trip for, for us. It's always nice to have athletes at the national level competing and, and representing the college ultimately and, and the athletic department and the track and field program. And, Anytime you get away with a couple All-Americans, uh, you know, that's never a bad weekend in, in any capacity, so. And before that, you had the ODAC championships, and you've obviously won a lot of those in your nine years here between cross country, indoor and outdoor track and field. Both teams placed second this time around, although you were each missing probably one of your biggest point scorers with Alex Galloway on one side and Felicia Clements on the other, so you're, you're right there. You know, how, how did that go for the team, and you know, what can you do going into the spring to try to get back in the first place? Uh, it was it was good. Um, I got to give a lot of credit to our athletes. They they really put together a tremendous meet on both sides, and uh, the level of focus that was there going into that meet, and and the desire to to really push ourselves and see how far we could get, knowing that we we had some people that were injured. Uh, you know. I, I couldn't have been prouder of the effort that they put forward for us, um, and the men being as close as they were, a seven and a half point deficit with Washington and Lee. Uh, so it, it's one of those things, staying healthy really is the key for us right now with, with the personnel, the people that we have on the team, and making sure that uh, we're in as competitive a spot in a position to win going into the spring meet. Uh, that men's meet is probably going to be just as close. It could go either way. And uh, Lynchburg will be tough on the women's side, but I think our, our ladies are hungry after the indoor meet, and they're certainly going to be making a harder push uh, this spring to, to try and get back on top of the conference. Yeah, talk about the conference and uh, talk about the competitiveness and what it, it means each and every meet, not just in the, in the conference, but in the region. I mean, mm -hmm. describe how tough it is to get, uh, get your athletes into those positions for the championships and what it means to compete in the it's, uh, it's definitely tough. Um, the, the conference in track and field in particular has gotten a lot more competitive in the last handful of years. Um, when I was in college at Lynchburg, there were only six teams in the ODAC, and now there are 10 uh, schools that sponsor track and field. So the depth of the conference has, has increased dramatically in the last 10, 15 years. Anytime you start having more teams, more programs, more athletes, it, it gets more competitive. And, um, you know, it, the, the bigger schools, us, Washington and Lee, Lynchburg, Roanoke, always competitive in that top four. And uh, you, you really have to have a complete team. And that's what it's all about. You can't get by with one or two stud athletes. Um, and that's one of the things that, that's really nice with our program is we're pretty solid throughout all of our event areas. So in terms of being competitive, you, you've got to field somebody in every event. You've got to have people that can score in every event. And, um, we've been fortunate the last handful of years that we've been able to do that. And we've been fortunate that we've won a lot of titles in the last handful of years in a very competitive conference. Uh, and we, we hope that success continues moving into the future. That's one of our major goals for our program. So you are in your first year as the director of the program, taking over for your college teammate, Brian Flynn. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we have a new cross country <laughs> coach, Brian yep, Cunningham, who yep. we will speak to in a little bit. So just talk about those coaching changes. Um, well, the transition, anytime it's a mid-year transition, is, is kind of always a, a little bit of an interesting piece for the coaches, the student athletes, um, you know, direction, things that we're going. But uh, Coach Stevens and myself, you know, we've, we've done a very good job keeping things relatively the same, not trying to rock the boat too much for our athletes. I think that's made the transition for them smooth. Uh, getting through the hiring process, bringing Coach Cunningham in was was good. Um, he's done a tremendous job in his first month here with us, um, coming in, helping some of our higher-end athletes like Callista stay 
competitive, Jamie stay competitive, where they're at coming off the cross country season and having Callista get into the national meet and, and Jamie be right on the bubble in the 5K. Um, I think it's it's proof of some things to come with, with having Coach Cunningham on our staff and uh, moving forward. For me, it's obviously been an interesting transition and, and seeing things from a little bit different side, uh, sitting in the director's seat, but it's been good and, and it's been a welcome challenge and, and something that I think uh, moving forward is hopefully only going to get easier. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, with these changes, there comes new responsibilities, obviously, and then there's always that recruiting piece that mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. are talking about year in and year out. Mm -hmm. What is it about Bridgewater College that you're selling to your recruits and to the people that you're trying to get to join your competitive program? Um, I, I think, you know, the, the obvious selling point is the success of our program. Um, first and foremost, you know, I think people like to come and be a part of a successful program. and. Um, it's it's easy to talk to athletes about hey come in help us with that winning tradition help us continue to be a successful program at the conference regional national levels um, but you know one of the big things we're talking to our athletes about with our program in particular but with the college in general is is leadership opportunities um, opportunities for growth academically growth personally um, we have a very family oriented atmosphere we're working on making our program one where everybody really feels like they're a part of that core uh, in our program and, and is contributing in some way, um, whether it's points on the track or you know being a good teammate, supporting your teammates, um, helping your teammates academically, whatever the case may be. Um, that's really what we're selling is an, is an overall positive experience for our athletes when they come into our program and, and messaging to them that they're part of something bigger than themselves. Um, so when we're looking for athletes, that's what we're looking for, and, and those are the kinds of individuals we're working to attract into our program and ultimately into the college community as well. Now it is day of giving, so how have you know giving and fundraising impacted your ability to run a competitive program here? Uh, fundraising is crucial. I mean, I, I don't think you're going to have any coach come in here today and not say, hey, fundraising is a massive part of, of what makes the wheels turn here at Bridgewater College. and. Uh, for us, um, you know, track and field in particular is, is not a cheap sport as far as equipment. Um, anybody who's been involved in the sport understands that hurdles, high jump mats, pole vault mats, pole vault poles, starting blocks, uh, timing equipment, a lot of those items are significantly priced. Um, so in terms of making sure that we have the equipment we need for our athletes to train first and foremost, because that's what we do most of the time that we're here on campus, um, but also that we have good equipment in place for when we do host home meets. Um, those are probably the most significant ways our donors impact us. Um, we had a, a pretty sizable donation this past fall that we bought new high jump standards with. Um, so that was something that we really were happy to get from one of our alumni and um, really, I know our high jumpers appreciated it, but again, from a, a hosting standpoint, from providing experience competition wise to teams that are coming in from outside, uh, having the money to be able to do those kinds of things is very important and then um, as far as our athletes directly you know fundraising impacts our ability to provide warm-ups our, our ability to provide a, additional practice gear it really helps us with team travel in terms of extensive trips that we might take last year uh, we traveled to Myrtle Beach over spring break to start the outdoor season we were able to fund some of that through donations from our alumni and family and friends uh, for the team to spend four days in Myrtle Beach and compete at Coastal Carolina. Uh, so providing additional opportunities for our athletes competitively to get them in a different environment, to get them to a D1 meet at a place like Coastal Carolina, um, spend some of that quality time together on the road and, and really get to bond and, and have some time away from campus is, is the other big important piece with that. So um, any donations that we get, that's what we're looking at using them for. And, and again, it's about our athlete experience and making sure that they're having the best possible one while they're here. Definitely. And I, talking with your student athletes, I know they're very appreciative. And they, they've always got a competitive spirit. They look before baseball in the, in the weight room. And they get, <laughs> they get it jumping in there. So, but Coach, yeah. thank you for taking the time with us. Absolutely. And best of luck going into the spring season. Thank and you. And just continuing uh, keeping Bridgewater at the top of the ODAC. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.